Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm giving up on Sequoia. I have tried reinstalling both on my 5,1 and 6,1, and it's just not working out until Apple fixes their network bug, which is a known issue. I can't believe they haven't rolled out a new update to fix it yet. I've tried a few of the betas, they haven't worked either. So I'm going to roll back to Sonoma until Apple gets its you know what together. I'm going to downgrade from Sequoia to Sonoma on my Mac Pro 5,1. So let's get started. Okay, so here you can see I've got Sequoia running. I'm gonna log into my account. Um, I could go through and show you all the issues I've been having. Basically, Safari is one of the main issues. If I launch Safari, it seems to throw a wrench, basically cutting off internet for most devices in my house. Sometimes some of them will still keep working. All I gotta do is launch Safari, websites stop loading, and I can't get on the internet. A new version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher is available. Well, well, let's see what it says. A bug fix released to handle some bugs with NVIDIA GPUs, general graphic bugs, and macOS 15.1 support. So is 15.1 out now? See below for the new changes. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. I just wanna see if it says anything about networking. A lot about GPUs. All right, we're just gonna download it, install it, and give this a quick try before we do the whole downgrade scenario, because obviously downgrading your OS is a pain in the butt. But let's see if there's a fix. Is there a 15.1 right now as well? Let's go check that out. Probably shouldn't be doing that while I'm installing the OpenCore patcher. 2.0.2 has been installed. Update successful. OpenCore legacy patcher has been updated to 2.02. .02. Would you like to update OpenCore and your root volume patches? Yes. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna install it to disk. Basically, it's just rewriting over my, now I have OpenCore installed on my Samsung, which has Sequoia on it. I installed OpenCore onto SATA Bay 1, and I have macOS Sequoia and SATA Bay 1. So we're gonna install onto the Samsung, which is in drive bay number one. To click on this first, now it's installing the new version of OpenCore to the EFI. And success. Would you like to update your root patches next? Yes, I would. So there is a patch for the networking, but that's always there. So we'll install our root patches. Um, you know, other people have ESET installed. I don't even know what ESET is. They delete ESET from the firewall options and bingo, they're internet problems go away. Now I don't have ESET installed, so I can't delete it. And we got a reboot now, and we're gonna have a new version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Will that fix the Safari issue? I doubt it. Seemed to boot faster. Definitely slightly different on the boot. So let's see if this is gonna fix anything with Safari. But first I also wanna see, is there actually an update for Sequoia that I don't realize is out now, 15.1. And I was just saying Apple needs to fix this because there are a lot of people where the internet seems to work fine for them, but they have usually one web browser that's not working or Apple Music's not working. And this is not just OpenCore Legacy Patcher unsupported Macs. This is also on M2, M3 Macs, M1 Macs. I've seen people have the issue. Let's just check the system settings and see if there's an update for Sequoia. Oh, I got the beta installed already. I forgot I did that. So Sequoia is still at 15.0. It's not, there is no 15.1 yet. Let's go to Firefox first. Now, the other thing is I've been having problems with, aside from just internet, are the screen savers. They seem to work pretty well on my Mac Pro 6 comma one, but on the 5 comma one, they've been very glitchy. So internet is working. As you can see up here, I'm getting decent speeds coming in. Where it drops off completely is where I've rebooted the computer. Now, if I go to Safari, this is probably gonna go down to that, zero kilobits and not recover. I'm just gonna check this out. There's a nice bedroom and a spaceship. 
just to show you that the internet is working on YouTube. And I can go to Reddit, everything's working, right? We're gonna quit Firefox and we're gonna launch Safari. And we'll see what happens. Ooh, we still have internet connection. Let's go to eBay. Nope. Same old story. Stuck. And you know, you can load Apple, but that's because Apple's pre-cached in your computer. You load their site and they basically cache their entire website into your computer. Like I can go to something I haven't even looked at in a long time and it's gonna load. See? Because the whole website gets loaded in. But any other website, let's go to Chase Bank, not gonna load. Apple Artists, that probably won't load either because that's outside of the regular Apple website. But again, I'll try to go to eBay, no luck. And if you look over here, what's going on? Not much after we switch to Safari. And what's odd is you can still connect like screen sharing to another computer, you know, things of that nature, but I cannot for the life of me get Safari to load any websites. So we're definitely going to downgrade to Sonoma. And then we're going to also cut over here. I'll just show you this before I finally give up on this freaking bad release of an OS. And you know, I'll say it, a lot of people have not had these issues. But for me, it's been days of not being able to figure it out. Now, one thing we can do before I get out of here is I'll show you how to fix it. If you have ESET or something installed, your firewall, your options, and then you can go in here and add applications. Uh, supposedly adding Firefox, if it wasn't working, you go find the applications in your applications folder and you can add it to the list. I don't have it in there and it works, but I've tried adding Safari, still doesn't work. And then another fix for people is just turning off your firewall. So I've turned it off. We're gonna go back to Safari, but what Safari glitches out my router, that's it, that one launch of Safari. Basically, I gotta reboot my router. Go to YouTube, nope, nothing. Okay, so how do we downgrade from Sequoia to Sonoma? It's very simple, actually. You get your USB thumb drive, you download the installer, you install it onto the USB stick, you boot up off of that, you reinstall the OS, and it should work. So that's what we're gonna do. I gotta find my USB stick. It did mount, there it is. We're gonna launch the OpenCore Legacy Patcher app. I'm gonna try doing it differently. Seeing as I already have OpenCore installed, when you go install the new OS or even reformatting your drive, you're not gonna erase the EFI where OpenCore is installed. That is completely separate from your hard drive's partition. So we click on Create Mac OS Installer then download macOS installer, and the list of installers will show up. There they are. So we're gonna download Sonoma 14.7. Download, download anyways. Okay, so we're downloading Sonoma, and I'm gonna stop here and just come back when it's done. Okay, we're back, and Create macOS installer, finish extracting the installer. Would you like to continue and create a macOS installer? Yes, I would. Fetching local macOS installer. Install macOS Sonoma. Click on that. Now this is where we have the choice of what drive we're gonna put the installer on. We're gonna put it on my thumb drive and it's gonna erase it. Are you sure you want to erase the Patriot? Yes. We're gonna wipe the thumb drive and it's gonna copy the installer on there. This is gonna take quite a while because once again, I'm using a USB 2.0 port. So we're just gonna let this go. It's gonna build the installer onto the thumb drive. It just erased it. And now it's called install macOS Sonoma. It used to say install macOS Sequoia. It's also very handy to have a USB thumb drive that has a flashing light on it because then you know something's going on. You know it's writing to the disk. When you just have one that has no LED on it, you don't know what's going on. You're stuck with a screen that doesn't look like it's doing anything. 
Okay, we're going to let this continue. I'm going to hit stop on the record here and throw my laundry in the machine, and then I'll come back. And we're going to say goodbye to Sequoia. Later, dude. You suck. Successfully created the macOS installer. Install created successfully. Would you like to continue and install OpenCore to disk? I'm going to say no, because we already have OpenCore installed on our boot drive. I'm going to say no. Okay. Now we're going to quit OpenCore and we're going to boot off the thumb drive. Okay. There's my installer. We're going to go to that. See, it's booting off the installer. So because OpenCore is already built and it's installed, I don't have to reinstall it. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to erase the Sequoia drive completely, but OpenCore will still stay on there because it's on the EFI. It's not on the hard drive partition. It's on its own little EFI partition that's normally hidden. So when you reformat a drive, you don't erase the EFI. The only way to do that is to do a deep reformatting of the drive. Quick reformat does not erase the EFI, which is a good thing to know. So now we've booted into recovery and I'm going to go to disk utility first because I want to just wipe off Sonoma altogether. I'm just going to erase this whole thing. I want to erase the data. I want now if you have data on here and you don't want to erase over it, you can just reinstall the system. But because this has been causing me so many issues, I'm going to erase everything. Again, this is my test computer. I don't have any files on here that I need. So I'm going to erase it. Erase. Okay, that's done. We're going to close out of that. And now we're going to install Sonoma onto the hard drive we just erased, which is in SATA Bay 1 on the Mac Pro 5 comma 1. Continue. Little bit of spinning beach ball. Sonoma, there we go. Took a little while to get to that window. Agree. And there's my hard drive. It's only a 250 gig hard drive. Continue. Okay, we're going to stop it here again because this takes a while to do. But as you can see, I am now got rid of Sequoia. Bye bye. You've been a pain in the you know what for days. I just could not get Safari to work. It's funny because a lot of other people. Safari works and Firefox doesn't, or Chrome did work on the five one, didn't work on the six comma one. I mean, it's very strange what's going on. So here's something that happens pretty often when you're doing this Mac OS install. It looks like it's stuck. Just be patient. All of a sudden it's gonna go zoop and it's gonna reboot and probably do some more stuff. There's usually three to four reboots before you're completely done with a Mac OS update. Yeah. It just dropped down to 20 minutes, so it is moving along. We'll pick it up after the next reboot. Looks like we're about to reboot. There we go. We don't want to install. We want to boot into Mac OS. It's probably going to have to reboot yet again after this. We shall see. Drinking a lot of coffee today, folks. This is a completely clean install of Sonoma now, and I guarantee you I'm not going to have problems with Safari. Unless for some reason, see, it rebooted again. See, it's still got stuff to do. 98% complete. It's a pretty slow process. Okay, we're rebooting again. Now we'll see if OpenCore Legacy Patcher says we have to install some post-install patches. Heard the boot chime that time. Come on. There we are. This should be a normal boot. Let's see. That's looking pretty normal to me. Usually takes about 30 seconds to boot into Sonoma. Used to be quicker with Monterey. Uh, I did have Monterey on an NVMe. And we're in. No, I'm not in Afghanistan. Up, oh, United States. And there we are, back to Sonoma. Whoopee. So we're back in. Just gonna let it settle in for a second. Good old Spotlight is gonna start indexing stuff. So we can see that I got Wi-Fi, but I do not have Bluetooth. My Bluetooth, eh? wait, Bluetooth woke up. Look at that. That's nice. I got my wireless magic mouse here is working. This is the moment of truth, folks. Moment of truth. Show and finder. I just want to see what version of Safari this is. 17.6. 
okay? It's Safari 18.0 that's the problem. You can see it's already working because these things are filling up. And there we go. You can tell that loaded. Let's just go to some of these other links here. No problem. Safari's working. See, YouTube is loaded. And a sellout tour of the country ended unexpectedly when he gave a final concert at the Hammersmith Odeon. Let's see, boom, we're loading, no problem. Something going on with Safari in Sequoia. And the other thing I'm gonna show you is the screen savers are also gonna work. Let's go to our screensaver. See, this stuff is loading for the very first time. So brand new system, takes things a while to acclimate here. And we're gonna go to screensaver. God, I hate this new system preferences. The old one, you looked at an icon, you clicked on it. Now they bury stuff. It's getting more and more Windows-like or iOS-like, whatever you wanna call it. But screensaver, it works. Whereas in, Se in Sequoia, while they were kind of working on my 6,1, they were not working on the Mac Pro 5,1. They worked when I first tried it, and then they stopped working. Don't ask me why. But there seems to be quite a few bugs going on with Sequoia. And granted, I'm using an unsupported Mac. I am using OpenCore Legacy Patcher, but from what I've seen online, there's a huge amount of people having issues with their internet connection and certain apps not connecting to the internet, Apple Music, App Store. So the lesson here is don't just jump to the latest version of Mac OS because it's got a few new bells and whistles. If you have a computer that you rely on day to day for your work, absolutely do not jump into trying the new OS. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I still don't really get what's going on, why it works for some people and it doesn't work for other people. It's like a combination of things because if it works for some and it doesn't for others, you know, I don't know what the answer is yet, but I will find out and I will let you know. So stay tuned, give me that thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next Max Sound Solutions video.